right now, Brad Smith and I are going to jump in and we're going to talk about your website development strategy. So Brad, I'm going to stop my share and let you take it over. And we're going to talk about how to really build on the talk that you guys did earlier on creating a digital marketing system and look at that where the website piece fits in. So let's take it away. Yeah, thanks so much, David. And like you just mentioned, we talked a little bit earlier about how to use digital marketing to drive traffic to your website. Well, that's great if we can get traffic to your website, but you need to make sure that your website is set up to convert. We need to make sure that the traffic getting there is the right traffic. We have the right message and it appeals to them and gets them to take that next step. So David, if you don't mind, let's start off by talking about website strategy and and any strategy really starts with who we're targeting. Yeah, so we're going to look at the the first and most important thing is who's coming to your website. So some of this answer is really obvious. I've got people coming to my website. Well, job seekers are probably going to be the number one source of traffic. And then I'm going to get employers coming to my website. But then there's people I have a relationship with, my current associates, my current clients. And then there's people not related to sales or recruiting, but candidates who might want to work for us or vendors, partners, or investors. When we're thinking about website conversions, and most of this talk is building on this little diagram right here, and I'm going to explain this a little more fully. This diagram is all about something called CRO, conversion rate optimization. So the drivers is understanding who these people are and why they're coming to your site or what's bringing them to you. Why is a candidate coming? Well, maybe they're searching for a job. Well, maybe they just want some advice. Maybe they just want to see what salaries are out there. They're starting to do some research. Not every candidate is coming to your site for the same reason. You need to think about all the reasons someone might come to your website. Same with the employers. Maybe they, you know, your salesperson call and Marianne said, you know, give an example. It's the fifth time we've called, nobody's answered. Well, that person who picks up the call on the fifth time probably checked you out on the third or fourth time. That's why they took the call. So what did they learn on their website? What did they go? They didn't go to the website to call you, but they went to websites to see who the heck you are. What do you do? Why are you calling me? And more importantly, what can you, the staffing company, do for me, the employer? Is your site answering that? Is it answering it quickly? And again, I'm not going to go through the whole audience, but every audience you see on the left is coming to your website for multiple reasons. You want to brainstorm all those reasons because that leads to that little thing on the right that says hooks. When people come to your website, you need to hook them. And the stats are bad on people who come to a website and don't go to more than one page. The average staffing website has about a 60% bounce rate. And you're never going to take that to zero because lots of people are coming for one thing or some of the stats is bot traffic that's only seeing one thing. But human beings, too many of them come and leave without taking a next step. Ideally, you want to see all the human traffic leaving your website on an exit page that says, Thank you for contacting us. So we need those hooks. An obvious hook can be a thing like apply to a job or contact us about our services. But we need to think about every one of those audiences, why they're coming, and how can we persuade them to act? What are things we can offer? And then last thing, we want to look at the barriers. What gets in the way? So there are things on our website that stop people from taking action. I couldn't find what I want. Uh, it took too long to load. It didn't even say what you did. Doesn't tell me about your services. I don't know where to go next. The navigation is confusing. You have something like three to five seconds to get them from the driver to the hook or they're going to leave. So Brad, what we're looking at in the ideal audience is how do we get them to take action? But first, why don't you help them how to get them to visit? Yeah. Thanks, David. Really, there's five ways to get found. And we covered some of these earlier, but number one is looking at direct traffic. Are you doing a great job in the market? Are your salespeople out there speaking your praises? Are you doing other type of marketing in the real world that's driving some direct traffic back to your site? Maybe you have an irresistible offer that somebody is compelled to learn more about. Next might be search. So search engines. Prudence mentioned it earlier on one of the sessions today, about 54, 55% of all traffic to every website comes through search. What are you doing with content and search engine optimization to drive more visibility, get your brand in front of more people and attract more traffic? Then there's paid. Uh, And I think it's a very underused element uh, marketing tool within the staffing industry. What can we do not just, just to get job candidates to our website, but to get people that are hiring over to our website. Then we've got social. What are we doing on social media sites to stand out from the competition and create a reason for people to come to your website? 
And then finally, referral traffic. So who else out there already has the ear or the attention of the person that you're trying to sell into, the person that you're trying to attract to your site? And what can we do to drive more referral traffic? And really to drive sales, what we need is a system. And this is going to be a repeat of a slide that I did earlier, but I think it's an important one. At the crux, at the core, at the hub of your digital marketing system is your website. David mentioned the acronym earlier, CRO, Conversion Rate Optimization. We need to make sure that we have a website that converts, not just attracts people, not just gets them to stay, but gives them a reason to take the next step. Fill out a form, fill out an application, pick up the phone and call you. We need to make sure that we have custom landing pages if we're doing any type of PPC campaigns or other promotions. Um, we need to make sure that it's optimized for search and for the user. So we provide a great experience on desktop and on mobile. We need to make sure that it's current, uh, that it differentiates our business. And then we need to make sure that it's integrated with our ETS and our CRMs. We need to ensure that it's not just an online brochure. So it's not just talking all about us and our services. But we provide great content that attracts more people to it gives them a reason to come back. We need to make sure that it's search engine optimized so we have a good keyword focus, we're answering the right questions, and we're providing value. We need to use PPC or online advertising to get in front of people that are looking specifically for the services that we offer or are parts of groups that we're really trying to segment and target and go after. There's a great opportunity for us to identify hiring managers, hiring authorities, specialists, and target them very specifically through PPC. We need to look at social media and the relationship that it has with building our brand, building our network, but then also driving traffic back to our website where people can take action. We need to incorporate email marketing and those referrers that I mentioned, thinking about other people's stages, other people's audiences that uh, we can use to drive more visibility for our business. Now, all of this is great. And for many companies, this is their digital marketing system. I'm going to recommend that you add two more items to that. And that's PPC retargeting or remarketing. So we, we, we know that staffing is not a one call close. We have to repeatedly call, have repeated touch points. Uh, our website may not be a one visit close. We need to give people a reason to come back and stay in front of them. So when their current provider screws up, or when they have a walk-off on the job site, we are front and center when they're experiencing that problem. We can do this with retargeting, and we can do this with marketing automation. And when we do that, we generally see two times the conversion rate. Hey, Brad, can you go back for a second before you move on to the sure the can. Five? Um, I, a couple of things I want to add to this is on the social media, I think a lot of people in our industry in the last several years, last five, six years, jumped in deep with social media and they're posting content. It looks great. And they're, they're looking at how much engagement are we getting, but really on a digital marketing system, it's, is that social media then relating back to people coming to our website or contacting us or taking some action under social media, there, there almost should be little circles around that for personal brands. It was mentioned by a speaker this morning. I think it was actually mentioned by Vicky in our opening presentation of the value of helping people build personal brands. But for your sales team and for your recruiters, a lot of what's going to drive traffic to your website is their personal branding around your company. So what they're doing should be in align with your company brand. It should be sharing that content that you're producing, but it also should, should be personal stuff. So people get to know and trust the people who work for you because that's going to bring them back through to your to your website. Um, another thing you mentioned, Brad, is direct traffic and referral traffic. I just want to touch on those and we, then we can move forward. Direct traffic means people are searching for you. They're going to Google, they're typing in your name or they already know your URL. Now, most people aren't going to know your, your URL. They're going to know your company name. So you need to be doing things in all this digital marketing around your website that gets people to know your name. And it's not just digital marketing. You need to be doing things in the real world through your sales efforts, through your recruiting, through your local market advertising and marketing so that people are looking for you by name. And the one, the last one is those refers. I can't overestimate the value of people who are good partners referring your company because they know you, they trust you. Now, we we tend to think about referrers as like, who's giving us an endorsement? But are there actually people who already have relationships with the clients and candidates you want to be selling to that 
it's a form of partnership. Now, it may be a paid partnership or unpaid where they are regularly referring people to you. Now, refers, when you're looking at Google Analytics, means third-party websites. But I'm talking about human beings who work in other businesses who know you and are actively promoting you because of not just your services, but the content you share, your expertise, your knowledge. You've heard multiple speakers today talking about the value of being very focused on specific niche markets and having the confidence to talk about your expertise. You've got so much expertise. Your referrers are the people that need to know you're good at this stuff. So I just wanted to share those points because a lot of getting tra traffic to a website and making a website perform happens way outside the website itself. Yeah, it certainly does. But being the core, being the hub, you need to make sure that your website uh, is converting because all of that traffic without conversion isn't going to help you on your bottom line. All right. So that's a great segue into how to making your make your website sell. So um, to start, and I hate starting with negative, but there's some failure points in many websites out there. And what I would encourage you all to do is look at analytics, look at the data, determine where people are exiting on your website. Where are you losing people out of that funnel? Now, oftentimes when I look at staffing company websites, the highest exit page is a homepage, is the job board, or is a contact page. If it's your homepage, you don't have a compelling message there. You're not getting people to move on. You need to take some immediate action. If it's uh, the job, uh, a specific job. Maybe that job just wasn't right or, or a good fit for the person, or maybe that job description stinks and we need to rewrite that. If it's your contact page, maybe somebody was just coming there to pick up your, uh, to find your phone number, pick up the phone and call. That would be natural uh, to happen. So you need to take uh, those numbers with a grain of salt and really dig in and figure out why people are exiting and whether or not it's a problem that you need to address on your website, either through how your website functions, the user experience, or the content. Next is traffic sources. So we need to dig deeper and find out how people are finding you and what the trends are. David mentioned the power of referrers earlier. Are there websites, are there other referrers that are driving a ton of traffic to your website? Let's identify those. Let's double down on that, produce some more content for them, or find other websites out there that are similar to theirs that we could share our content on and drive more traffic to. One of the things that we do in our ongoing SEO service is we'll actually go in and analyze your competitor site. So we'll find out what referring sites, what types of content are driving the most traffic for them, and then create better, more compelling traffic to steal that, or better, more compelling content um, to steal that traffic. So look at those trends and figure out what, where you can capitalize on that. And then the grandma test. I love this one. Uh, it, it, think about whether or not your grandma visiting your homepage or your website could understand what you do and why you're special within 10 seconds. If, if she couldn't do that, then you have a problem. We need to clearly convey our value proposition and do it within a few seconds because you're not going to have longer than that. David, if you don't mind, talk to us a little bit about now turning this, this traffic into sales leads. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about in the beginning when I was using that graphic, talking about hooks. So now we're trying to get people to, to take action. So there's lots of different calls to action that you can put on your website. But in, in marketing speak, we talk about CTAs or calls to action and conversion paths. Well, you can kind of see the graphic here. You know, we're all the things someone could do to take an action. I can buy something. I can download something. I can apply to a job. I can contact you. What you want to brainstorm is what are all the ways we can add value for the ideal clients we're trying to attract and the candidates. If I'm tracking an HR manager, what does that HR manager want to know? What information do I have that they would find valuable? Because I can turn that into an offer. Now, you start closest to the sale. I want someone who's contacting me because they want help with st staffing. They need to hire. They want to request an employee. Then maybe I move up a level. Maybe they need help putting together a job description or they need help getting a salary benchmark. Then I move up a little bit and maybe say, well, there's other content they may be interested in. And if they perceive me as an expert at that content. So I'm thinking about a funnel, the bottom of which is buy something or place a job order, but up is all of the touch points someone's going to go through. And what can I offer? At the very highest level, it's probably just content, get an ebook, webinar, salary guide. Then it may be get a consultation, talk to a recruiter, talk to a staffing consultant or a hiring expert. 
Then it's the contact us to place a job order. So on the client side, on the candidate side, you're thinking through these funnels and then also the path. Where's somebody coming into our website? Don't assume it's the homepage. In fact, most often it's probably the homepage is number one, but after that, it's probably a blog post or a job post. And what's the conversion path look like, particularly from your blog page to somebody taking action? When we review staffing websites, the majority of sites we see have little or no conversion path from a blog page. We're not doing anything to drive people to take action. So we're giving away great information. We're blogging. We're getting eyeballs. And it goes bye-bye because we didn't think about a conversion path. We also have to grab people quickly. I mentioned that three to five seconds. If people don't know what you're offering and how to get it almost instantaneously, they won't figure it out. You, you're on you know, these little devices here, your smartphone, and you're scrolling at 10,000 miles an hour and you're looking at pictures and you're watching videos, you're reading emails. When we're on a website, you're still scrolling. And anything that requires a lot of thought to figure out, doesn't matter how smart you are, you're just not going to put the effort in. Make it effortless for visitors. Then don't let them get away. So I can think about things like fly-ins or exit intent pages or just having calls to action at the bottom of content that someone's reading so that before people leave the site, I'm doing everything possible. Brad mentioned automation. If I can be getting someone's name, getting their email address, I can automate follow-up. If I can't, I can be using lead tracking software to identify companies. Now you can even start to identify some of the specific people who are on your website with those software tools so that we can not necessarily instantly sell to them, but create an appropriate follow-up path. And then think about how you're going to turn content into sales. So if you're giving away a salary guide, if you're consulting with someone on how to write a better job description, how does that then turn into a sales process? You may be giving away lots of freebies, but what's next? The mistake I see people make all the time is you download something on your web from a website and two seconds later, a salesperson's calling you. Nothing is more off-putting than the instant buy something. Look, we just met. I'm not ready to get married. But we just met and I might want to know what's next. Give me something else. Walk me down the funnel, the conversion path to get me to the altar. You do that through a series of steps, plan those out so you have those touches, human touches and automated touches to build those relationships that make someone really want to work with you. All right, Brad, we'll turn it back up to you on content that sells. Yeah, and, that, and that's a nice segue, David. We need to add value to the equation. It's not about selling. It's about adding value and being seen as a consultant, building that trust over time. So one of the best things that you can do is simply be relevant, be interesting. And how do you do that? How do you know that you're creating content that uh, sells without selling? Well, number one, you need to have conversations with your clients. Ask your clients what's keeping them up at night. Uh, for all of those from Haley Marketing that are listening to this call, they're, they're going to know I'm going to say, ask your client how business is and then shut up and listen. Uh, they will be forthcoming about what's going on in their business and what their biggest challenges are. And then be an active listener and probe. Look at trade magazines, ask for their editorial calendars so that you know what's happening in the industries that your clients serve. And you can have more educated discussions and produce more content that is relevant to them. Look at industry conferences. Who's speaking at those conferences and what are they speaking about? Look at the Smart Idea Summit. We have some of the top speakers from the staffing agency. You can do the same thing for the industries that you serve. Ask your salespeople, what are the ob objections that they're consistently hearing? What are the biggest challenges that are keeping their prospects up? Um, use SEO research tools like Ahrefs to find out what people are searching for. I mentioned earlier, we use tools like Ahrefs to find out what people are going to competitors' websites and what's engaging and attracting them there. Do this research and then create content that is more compelling, more valuable, and provides more insight and you're going to earn that traffic. So let's talk about putting ideas into action. David, do you mind taking what I just shared and talk about how you build a good signature content plan? Yeah, so um, I'm going to actually use a case study, and I'm going to use one that hits close to home, Haley Marketing. So the first thing you do is you come up with an idea for a piece of content around a theme. So we did one back in January this year. I think if you hit the page down, it'll show a picture of it. Um, oh, maybe it's a little later. So... Mm -hmm. You can, go to, you can go to the end and put the picture up. Yeah, we'll get Brad Biley shared it earlier this morning. And 
it is uh, one more. Let's get that picture up. There we go. There we go. So it's our uh, our level up ebook, which we wrote back in January. I think it's uh, 20, 24 pages of really good content with 11 strategies to improve all things related to selling. It was signature content because we knew that 2023 was going to be a harder year to sell in staffing. A lot of people listening in today, this may be the first time you've ever seen a downturn in our industry. Those industry veterans, they know what it feels like. Uh, and when you hit a downturn, it's painful. So if you can solve a painful problem for your client, that's a great piece of signature content. Then once you create the signature content, you integrate it with your website. So you build a landing page. Hillymarketing.com forward slash level dash up is our landing page. You can get this content for free. You integrate it with different places in the website that you're driving people to that landing page. So those fly-ins, those pop-ups, the, the messages at the end of blog posts, you're integrating it into your site to drive people to the landing page with your signature content. You give your sales team a digital marketing toolkit and your recruiters a toolkit so they can promote it through email signatures, promotional email content you're sending out, just taking bits and pieces of it and sending it out, creating social media posts where you take the big piece of content and you break it down into, we do it into blog posts and then the blog posts down into social posts. And then you can also create teaser materials that you, you use for a sales call. So I'm going out to, I'm going to an office park and I have got a call with one company, but I've got 20 others that are in the office park. I can drop off my teaser that drops and drives people back to that landing page. Better than just dropping off my business card, better than dropping off a brochure because I'm showing, hey, here's who I am and I've got something for you. We heard it earlier. You, you need to sort of make that deposit into the bank account. You have to add value before you try to extract value. This is a great way to add that value. Now at Haley Marketing, we took it a step further. When you watched Brad Biley's presentation earlier, you may have noticed all the video game-like graphics. We took this level up and we've made it into long-form presentations. We made it into short-form presentations. We contacted every trade association, every state association in the staffing industry back at the beginning of the year and said, hey, would you like a great presentation on how to level up sales? And I don't know the exact number of, of associations said yes, but it's eight or 10 maybe been higher, that said, yeah, come out and do this presentation. We got to the point where we had to have four different people from our company going to do the presentation because they were in different places, sometimes overlapping because the signature content was so on point with what mattered to the audience. Now, none of this says buy from Haley Marketing. None of your signature content is going to say buy from your staffing company. But what your signature content does is it shows you're an expert. You know something about the big challenges that matter to your clients. You know how to hire the right talent. You know how to make the hiring process easier. You know how to provide a better service experience. You are selling by sharing ideas as opposed to selling by convincing somebody that you're better. This is the essence of content marketing. And this is how a signature content plan takes somebody from the real world to your website to a conversion page. And that conversion page then goes back into follow-up automation. And if you want to see automation in action, no big surprise, our CMO who's teaching our automation class later this afternoon has already put together a series of follow-ups for all of you so you can see automation in action. And there'll even be one in there for us to evaluate your website as a freebie offer. All right, Brad, I think I covered it all there. I think so. Yeah. As you mentioned, this isn't just something that we're doing for ourselves. This is something that we do for clients. So we can help create that pillar piece of content and then break that into all of the different marketing support items that were mentioned. All right. We have a couple of questions. I'll stop the sharing and uh, here we go. Oh, you had the sharing. That's why I couldn't stop the sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Threw me off. A couple of questions that came in. Number one, uh, how do you get the analytics to see how long someone's staying on your website and pages that they're viewing? Is your area of expertise? Yep. You're going to uh, go to Google Analytics. If we've built your website at Haley Marketing Group, we can get you access. You can reach out to our success search support team and they can get you access to that. Uh, if you don't have Google Analytics installed, simple free tool. Um, you can install that on your website and begin tracking data. Challenges, if you don't have it on right now, can't go backwards. So get it installed and begin tracking. And I see Vicki already loaded up the uh, Level Up ebook. If you want to see a landing page, even if you don't want to download it, just see what one looks like, what you can do with it. Um, another question came in. It's about uh, using a tool to manage email signatures and messages across our organization. So, uh, Kristen, we actually did look at some of those third-party plugins. Uh, most of them were things we could add on to Microsoft Exchange. 
we made the decision not to use one um, only because we didn't like how they interacted with Exchange. Not that they're not good tools, just it didn't fit for us. So we have an individual on our marketing team that anytime we have something new, when we're doing a webinar, when we're doing our level up stuff, he actually works with our creative team, gets email signature add-ons design, just a little graphic and a link. And then about once a month, he sends them to the team saying, hey, here's this month's email signature option that you can just add to your signature. And most of the people in the company will just manually, because Outlook doesn't make it super easy, just manually add the graphics and the links to their email signatures. And then which it, Brad, this is a good one for you. Which tools have gotten more conversion, long form versus short form? Oh, that's that's a great question. So I would I would say long form simply because the long form is going to drive more traffic. So what we found is that long form posts drive a ton of traffic. Um, long form content drives a ton of traffic from search. So we have a higher percentage of people that uh, that you can convert from. With that said, the only way that works is having strong CTAs throughout. And then also tying in some of those remarketing. So once you get that traffic over, um, get them on a remarketing list, get them on a marketing automation list and make sure that you stay in front of those people. Yeah. And Sarah, I would say, it, it, I think the long form is probably better for conversion, but having breaking the long form into lots of short form and then sharing it multiple places yep. probably is a better way to drive traffic than just the long form. So um, I'm copying out by saying both. Yep. Yeah. And that ebook that David mentioned earlier, that's broken up into probably 10 different blog posts that all drive traffic back to download the full piece of content. 